understand Zen Server VM high availability? And this question comes up quite a bit. A lot of people like, how do you set up an HA environment in Zen Server? Is it supported? Good news is yes, this is an article from 2014. So it refers to the Citrix Zen Server. Um, now in 2019, we're talking about the XCPNG version 8.0 and how to do it there. So this article is actually still quite relevant, even though it's been five years, because the underlying operating system is essentially still based on the same principles, but it's been modernized and updated for uh, lots of fancy new features. So we're going to be talking about XCPNG version 8 and how to set up high availability in there. Now, I'm going to link to this article, which is still a great read other than some of the older screenshots in it. It's completely relevant. We have these three old Dells, and that's also what led to the name of the cluster. So if you look at our resource pool here, it's called the Lackluster Dell cluster, and it's because it's just a bunch of old Dells. This is just our lab environment. I wanted to set up for demonstration. Uh, there are some Dell 3010, 3020, 3020. They're pretty similar, and ideally, this is not the system you want to set up in terms of HA for a business environment, but it's fun for a lab and a demonstration. If you want to do something in business, of course, using much higher end servers with better redundancy, higher quality, and a redundant switch and a redundant storage would be awesome. Uh, but for lab and testing, this is great. Now, this is going to be the layout for our lab here. So we have our XCP 1, 2, and 3, those three Dells, as you've seen, connected to a single switch, all sharing storage and everything over one, one gigabit line to one free NAS storage box running NFS. This will be the shared storage configuration. And you may have noticed I have a tab pulled up here that says HA Lizard because someone always asks about this. Yes, you can do this as well with a Zen server. The problem with these types of configurations, if you're not familiar with them, HA Lizard is a way you can do this without having a shared storage. So you can just have two servers and configure high availability and use the local storage pools on each individual server. The problem right away you're going to run into with this is IOPS. So if you have a ton of writes going on on server one, host one here, and those writes have to be synchronized over to the second host. That way, if there's a failover, we have a most recent copy of the system. That is a bottleneck. So you would have to have a really fast connection between the servers. So not only is it a fast connection needed, it is also going to be the demand put on the drive system. It has to do a write over here and get that right, not only in transport, as in whatever the network connection is between the two of them, also in the disk activity of, hold on, I need to take this write information and get it over to the other system so it stays in sync. So this is a way to do it, but this will come at the cost of keeping those two things in sync uh, is a, well, it's an expensive hardware cost because of keeping all those writes up. So if you have something that doesn't write a lot or is using some type of external storage where all the heavy IO activity is going, that can be great. So the OS can live in an HA2 system environment. And I think this is a cool project. I've never actually messed with it much, but I know people always like to ask, have you heard of it? It's commented on many of my videos. Um, I have never tested this with XCPNG, but it should um, work. I don't really see why not. It's kind of a neat system. I'll leave it at that and I'll leave a link down below so you can, if you want to try it yourself. We're going to be doing this, like I said, with a normal shared storage system. Now, obviously this is non-redundant and you would use something much higher end in a commercial environment. And I'm gonna bring up an example of, you would have a whole storage SAN with failover. And you look at something I've reviewed before, it's like the TrueNAS system, where you can have a single storage server, but it actually has redundancy, not just in power supplies, but redundant motherboards even in it uh, to help survive a failure. And then you would of course have multiple switches and then multiple network interfaces and all these, et cetera. This is just a lab environment. All right, so understanding the mechanisms. So when you have HA, we would love it if it was more magical, but uh, and it would just immediately move a VM over, but we can't predict a failure. What I mean by that is it does move it over, but it does have to restart this. This is a misconception a few people have of if you lose a server. The reason it doesn't just magically work uh, with all three of these servers, if it's on a VM running on server two doesn't immediately shift over because it doesn't know the server is going to fail. And to try to keep a memory sync between two servers would be, well, really, really difficult. So it does restart. So that's part of what I want to mention. It has, if the VM fails and it's running on server two and server two fails out of the three cluster node, um, it will just restart on one of those other servers. This is where the shared storage comes in. 
it's living on the storage as far as all the data. Therefore, we don't have to ever move it. All three devices are connected to it. So the way you set these up is go over here to the pool. So we'll start pools, cluster. Now, whenever you add, and I have a more in-depth video on how pools work, uh, you can join other devices to the resource pool. So you just go here to add hosts. You grab the first machine and I named the pool lackluster Dell cluster, and then I added the other two hosts to it. Once I had all the hosts added and we got to all three of them on here, they combine all into this resource pool. And it uh, currently has uh, two VMs and there's three hosts in the pool. Here's the three hosts, XCP, NG, one, two, and three. You can see the IP addresses of them here. Now storage, this is the important part. When we added storage, I added a, so we have new storage. And anything you add, you just choose the uh, any one of the cluster here, but because they're in there and the storage is available to all of them, so we're going to go ahead and choose an NFS storage mount. It will allow you then to just, once you connect it to one, it just connects it to all of them. So pretty straightforward. And once it's added, we'll go over here to storage and show it again. You can rescan all this or connect to all hosts. Uh, pretty much the default when you add something to it, it's going to connect it to the hosts in that particular pool. So this is uh, how we get the storage set up. And it's important because right here, this little ID you have, I can hit copy to clipboard and we'll understand this a little bit better. One of the important things is all these machines, one, have to have exactly the same time. That's important because they're using time as part of what they call the heartbeat. So this explains how the heartbeats work. So you have to have a heartbeat that one, all these boxes have to talk to each other and all the boxes have to have a heartbeat and storage. So once the storage is set up, you then have to figure out what the shared sort is and set up the heartbeat. So uh, XE pool, H enable heartbeat, S R U U I D. So it, you want to add the U U I D of the storage in order to get this into H A. So we would go here and, you know, we copy this right here. All right. And uh, paste it in. And then for the, actual storage ID, that's this right here. It's already enabled, so it, it doesn't allow me to do it again, but it has to say this is the storage. So you can have storage that's not part of the HA and storage that is, this particular storage is. So now the system's going to be, you get the little, uh, go here, whoops, pools, get the cool high availability there. So now we know that there are, um, in high availability. And by the way, if you ever want to know how to change which one's master, that happens to be right here. We can, you know, change which one's the master because we can remove any of them, including the master, and it should automatically pick a new master for that. But uh, that goes beyond the demonstration what we're going to do here. So let's look at the VM itself. Now, because the storage, the bigger part of the VM, uh, this VM only has four gigs of RAM, but the larger part is the 16 gigs of storage it has, which I know is not much. Um, what we're gonna show what happens when you migrate it. It's currently on XCPNG2, so we're gonna go here, move it to XCPNG3. And you just see me click the move, and let's see, what's it running? I gotta run an HTOP just so it's doing something, and we'll show you how fast that move happens. So because we only have to synchronize the memory and we're sharing the storage between them, I can just live migrate this like nobody's business. And there we go, it's moved. Takes no time at all, I didn't fast forward that and now it lives on XCPNG3. What if I have to restart XCPNG3? Well, that's where it gets kind of interesting because we can take and uh, restart some of these servers and we'll just do this and watch it do it automatically. But let me show you something first before we do that you get to pick which one of these VMs, if you had multiple runs running, do you want to be HA? So do you want the HA to be enabled? Yes. What do you want it to do? You want it to restart. Um, it does have best effort and or disabled. So we can disable it, but I just recommend restart. Restart means if that host is lost, go ahead and restart this. So no problem. This is uh, currently, we'll go back to console and we see it's doing something right now, but now we're going to move the move it by restarting one of them so we can go here to the hosts and if we do this we'll go ahead and just reboot this one now obviously this is a soft fail so to speak we did some maintenance we need to restart something on this because it needs a thing what happens is it goes hey you tried to restart something and this is ha so it grabs this instead of shutting it down and it moves it on over to whichever server it needs to be moved to 
before restarting that particular computer. Obviously, this is the nice way of doing it. The next way we're going to doing it is less nice because we're going to go ahead and unplug a server uh, that's running on there. So here is the Debian it migrated right over to XCPNG2. And now we're waiting for the other one, which we go over here to hosts. It's in restart, so it turns yellow until it becomes available again. This also allows you, without having to shut things down, provided you have enough resources across your pool to do things like load patches and then roll the patches out in a machine. And by the way, Zen Orchestra will handle that for you automatically. So you apply all the resource pools and you have different VMs running on it and they're in HA. It'll shift them between there while it does the restarts and it's a pretty slick system. While we're waiting for the reboot, read a little more on here. You do have the option, depending on, we started with three hosts here, but yes, you can add more and you can determine the maximum number of host failures to tolerate. You can get some real, you know, more in depth and they have a good explainer for each step of this on, on here, halting the VM. So you can halt it. You do have to make sure that all these are talking to each other when you do one of these failures, because if you were to halt it and you weren't and the machines were out of sync, one of the problems you could have is it could try to start that VM on another machine and you can end up with some errors. So what we're going to go with, you know, I'll just read through all this to get more of those details, but generally speaking, what you're trying to prevent is this, pull the plug type of failure, as in hardcore, we're just going to pull it, shut it off and unexpectedly do it and show you what happens there. So because we did nice soft fails, we go over here to the VMs and these soft failures means the VM never had to restart because it was just live migrated between the machines so we could do maintenance. Those are nice and convenient, but let's show you what happens and how long it takes for uh, me to unplug XCPNG2 in the cluster here and from unplugging it, how long it takes to restart on the next one. So all of our hosts are up and running and we can see the VM is running on XCPNG2. So we're just going to unplug XCPNG2 and Go ahead and uh, see what happens. So I walked over to the Dells, I unplugged them, started the timer on my phone. So far we're at uh, 30 seconds. Well, it's, uh, we lose the console, console right there and we're waiting for this to start back up. It'll take a second, XCPNG is down, it's doing its thing. So it's gonna take a second here and it's confirming that it is no longer living. So uh, this should disappear shortly here. It's been 50 seconds. Took a minute 20. It's restarting it. So we're at now at uh, 130. I've seen the restart happen at 120. We're at like 130 now. And let's see, check this right here. And it's up and running. So under two minutes, it restarted the server and away you go. So it was about a minute 45 from the time I pulled the plug till it was booted up and pinging and we can log back into it over here. So it happens really fast. Like I said, there's fine tuning you can do with the HA system, but it works as expected. And we go over here to our hosts and that one's missing from the list now because it's down. And we can see it just as red right here and I could try to restart it, but obviously it's, uh, I, I have it physically unplugged. And all we have to do to add it back is after it sits there, um, if I want to go, hey, let's put the system back, back in play, we just plug it back in, start it back up and it joins the resource group again and no big deal. And if it was dead permanently or we're moving things out, we could just remove this from the cluster as well and remove the whole system. So I'll leave links to all this so you can do some deeper reading in this, participate in the forums over at XCPNG or our forums if you have some questions on it or thinking about building one. And of course, if you're putting in something heavier duty, uh, you obviously want to design this with either, you know, multipathing iSCSI or a uh, larger storage array. I do recommend like some of the TrueNAS systems, which I've reviewed because they're really awesome for doing this because you can build a really high availability single storage box. That's a uh, reasonably priced, but yeah, this is, you know, all those things uh, become weak points. So you have to double up on all of them when you're building an HA server. And I won't lie, the HA lizard system is pretty cool too, but think about if you have a problem with high 
right volume, uh, whether or not that solution works for you. But I'll leave links to all this and you can check it out. And once again, all the, oh, by the way, is I will mention this before, if you haven't watched any of my XCPNG videos I've done before, 100% open source. All of this is uh, free with the exception of those Dells, which are actually technically free, so for recycling. <laughs> There's some old recycling computers. Um, but this is a 100% open source project. There's no license fees associated with uh, any of these HA modes uh, that I discussed here on Zen server. So um, all this is done with open source software. Uh, so I want to throw that out there and mention it. And uh, that's it. Thank you. And head over to the forums. You want to further and continue on the discussion. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.